Welcome to video nine in a series of introductory videos for the SolidCam CNC programming software. In this video's topic will be 3D eye machining. So we just saw in video eight how to do 2D eye machining. That's basically a optimization of a pocketing toolpath. In 3D eye machining, we're gonna take that to the third degree. We're gonna actually apply it to an entire solid. And this will be one of the first 3D recognition toolpaths we've covered in this introductory series. So I'll touch base on how those work as well. So let's start by opening up a 3D eye machining toolpath. 3D eye machining will use the same machine and material definitions that we saw in video eight. So if you wanna see how to set those up, I refer you back to video eight. But in 3D eye machining, being a recognition toolpath, you can see that it automatically is chosen the target as our geometry. What that means is for a 3D recognition toolpath, it's going to check the stock against the target, see what the excess material is, and then remove that material. In the case of 3D eye machining, it's going to use eye machining algorithm to program that removal of the material. So if I leave this as is, it will machine the entire target out of the stock. But if I want to limit the travel of the area, the only geometry I would really choose would be the working area. That allows me to limit the travel of the tool to let's say just the inside of the part. So rather than doing the entire part, I can say just choose the edge from the solid. Let's say we choose that edge there. I'll turn my constant Z on and I find the entire pocket there. So what I could do is I can get it to do 3D eye machining only inside of that pocket. That's what the purpose of the working area is, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna get this to generate a toolpath for the entire part. I also have a fixture defined. So again, as a 3D recognition toolpath, I can tell it to recognize that fixture and do a collision against it. So let's say I just take the tool and get within 10 thou of the fixture. Let's go to tool and I'll just select my first tool. In this case, I'm gonna choose a one inch tool, one inch diameter end mill. And in 3D eye machining, we actually have the ability to do multi-tool, which is what you see this little window up here is for. That allows me to choose a second tool. So in this case, I'll go with a half inch. So I've got two tools engaged here. Essentially what it does is it allows me to generate with one window, two 3D eye machining toolpaths, two toolpaths. The first one is gonna do the entire part. And the second tool will be automatically a rest milling operation. Rest milling we actually uh, covered in video five of this series. Video five and video eight both. They both have rest operations in there. And 3D eye machining does that automatically anytime you add a second or third or going forward, fourth, five, fifth, uh, 3D eye machining toolpath because it is recognizing that updated stock. So for the first tool, tool 24, I'll set my levels as from the top of the stock. And lower level, I'll set it to the bottom of the stock. And the reason I can do that is because as a recognition toolpath, it's actually looking at the target. So instead of upper level and pocket depth, we have lower level. So I'm really just telling it between those two Z levels, machine as much as you can of the target from that side, from map one position one. Okay, so we'll go to technology wizard. So I'm setting up the technology wizard for the first tool, tool 24. So I'm just gonna say level eight, turbo, and then technology, I'll leave behind 10 thou on the walls, the floor, and the scallop. So in this case, with a 3D recognition toolpath, what I'm actually getting it to do is not only leave material on the walls and the floor, I'm also asking it to set up some steps along any curved, or tapered edges, tapered surfaces. So this is actually just the height of that triangle. And I usually say to make those the same as your wall and floor offset, that way you have a nice uniform machined part. We can go right from this toolpath into finishing because we've left behind 10 thou on all surfaces in all directions. So I've set that up for my first tool. I'm gonna to go back to my levels. In my multi-tool window, I'm gonna set this to level three. I'm just gonna make sure the levels are the same. Technology Wizard is set to level eight. So it should just copy over. But again, the purpose of the multi-tool here is to allow me to just independently control the toolpath. You can see as soon as I set it to tool three, I need to set it to turbo mode. It's already at level eight. Under technology, I have to give it 10 thou as well. So even though multi-tool is allowing me to independently control these, 
it's still separate uh, toolpaths essentially, just in one window. So let's do a saving calculate on that. It'll so it'll analyze the part first using the one-inch tool. It's going to machine all that material, and then it'll automatically go right into calculating a second toolpath with the half-inch tool. Okay, and there we go. So let me get out of the toolpath and we'll take a look at the wireframes individually. So for now, they're both checked, we'll just uncheck. And we'll look at the one inch tool. So it's done as much of the material as possible. You can see I told it to look at the bottom of the part. So that's what it's actually done. It can only really do that through that center hole. Otherwise, everything else, it's machining as much as it can with the one inch tool. Fixture collision protection was engaged as well. So you can see that it came close to touching the part, but it stopped short. Let's take a look at the rest operation with the half inch end mill. So went in and did a few of the corners inside and outside the part. So in one tool pass, multi-tool, we can get all the tools engaged. We can set all our parameters and automatically have a eye machining tool path that roughs out the entire part and automatically have a rest roughing as well. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.